Steve Cooper, Rank Success, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the CVF, the Competency and Values Framework, and a specific part of the CVF guidance. So for those of you that this is new to, um, you can go onto the College of Policing's website, have a look at uh, the CVF or the Competency and Values Framework uh, guidance document. I think it's about 18 pages, you can download it. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to do that if you're aspiring to promotion in the next few months um, and the reason for that is because many people don't do that they only read the guidance they're given in their promotion uh, application or instructions so if you're somebody who wants to get ahead of the curve and start familiarizing yourself and orientating yourself with how you're going to be assessed because that's essentially what this is about that's essentially what the CVF guidance is for. It's used to assess you through various exercises, interviews, um, psychometric tests, briefings, um, and getting used to it, trying to get yourself orientated with it is a really, really good thing to do. Uh, how do I know that? Well, because I've had lots and lots of conversations. They've already started this year uh, with people who have just been successful on the exam. So the sergeant's exam results that have just come out. And I've already had lots of phone calls about um, uh, you know, what people can do ahead of the curve to get themselves match fit. So having just done the sergeant's exam, I expect many of you, if you're listening to this and you're one of them, uh, as someone said to me, Steve, I've had enough. And, you know, there's a real dose of reality with that. You know, you've probably spent the last few months studying. Um, it's stressful. You've spent time away from your family. And, you know, you need a break. Uh, and that's perfectly, you know, understandable. H have a break. Try and fit that in. Uh, trying to read the CVF now, which is what you're going to be assessed for in the next steps, is something that you can do i would say little and often so download any guidance you can um you so as, as i've said you can download the college of policing scholars uh, you can download a digital promotion toolkit a full digital promotion toolkit or a four-hour promotion masterclass from my site ranksuccess.co.uk uh, and you can hit the ground running really we're starting to familiarize yourself um, pick up put down information and just start refreshing yourself orientating yourself and getting used to the criteria by which you're going to be assessed for sergeant inspector or chief inspector wherever you are on that uh, spectrum so today i'm going to be talking about the descriptors what do i mean by that well uh, in the college of policing guidance you will have a, a, an outline an introduction a summary of what each of the competencies are in there so just whistling through those quite quickly we are emotionally aware is one we take ownership, uh, we collaborate, we deliver, support and inspire, we analyse critically, we're innovative and open-minded. So those are the main competencies, or as I prefer to call them, behaviours, because keep things simple, that's how I like to talk about them, but I will talk about them in both contexts so that you know where I am. Uh, and then you've got the values, and the values are slightly different for different forces. So in the Metropolitan Police, it's professionalism, integrity, courage and compassion. And uh, in the competency and values framework, uh, it's integrity um, and uh, what is it? integrity, public service, impartiality and transparency. So I had a bit of a bit of a mental blank there. So um, with the um, competencies and the values, you will then find alongside each of those competencies something more detailed, and they are called the descriptors. So for each of those competencies, you will have I think it's either four or six or seven little bullet points, which are, if you like, the specific guidance for you to start thinking about aligning your evidence to and with. And that can be really problematic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna read very quickly uh, a couple of um, communications I've received recently. So a couple of them are, if you like, testimonials, but they reflect officers' experience of where they were at this time that I'm talking to you about, about trying to understand the descriptors. So this first one um, it reads, I passed. After struggling with my first board interview, I needed to reassess how to approach the CVFs. 
I read them again and again and I had a mentor to help me. But apart from rejigging the information, I didn't understand what the competencies really meant. Then I watched some YouTube videos by Steve. Uh, like he suggested, I sat down with a pencil and a paper and I wrote down what the CVFs meant to me. I followed the videos which pricked inspiration and things started to fall into place. I started answering questions verbally to myself over and over again, walking around the park, talking to myself, driving and talking to myself and the next board interview I turned it around fully. I answered each question following my own acronyms as I understood the CVFs and this was down to Steve's videos. Thank you Steve, I turned a very poor first board around to a very high scoring interview this time and genuinely your videos and toolkits helped me understand what the CVF meant, not just words on the page. So that's one officer's reflection of I suppose what I'm trying to paint a picture to you now of is if you are uncertain about the CVF and you don't know about the CVF then rather than kind of go for a promotion process and be unsuccessful because you haven't taken the time to read through the guidance um, go to the other end of that spectrum and start familiarizing yourself with how you're going to be assessed because lots of officers um, this individual mark um, he's not the only one um, lots of people do that so they use up their valuable time and their energy and the emotional um, energy of going for a promotion selection process and being unsuccessful and that, that happens to lots of officers but it need not be so. So the competency uh, and values framework, the CVF descriptors if you like are those specific bullet points that you will find in your guidance and you'll get given it by your force in your promotion selection process and they are the things that uh, you will be expected to uh, align your behavior to align your written evidence to and with so it's well worth you having a look at those now and reading them in advance give yourself the courtesy the professional courtesy of a advanced briefing an intelligence briefing if you like on the CVF because lots of people look at the CVF and um, switch off I have lots of conversations with officers about the CVF it it has been described to me as distinctly uninspiring um, it just will not sink in uh, as alluded to by Mark in his scenario and he's not the only one but if you want to do well in a selection process it is the criteria by which you will be assessed so it's about getting with it and starting to read it and pick it up and put it down in bite-sized chunks and as I say I've got a um, digital promotion toolkit that you can download bespoke for you if you're going for sergeant uh, and again if you're going for inspector chief inspector there's a bespoke toolkit there's a four-hour promotion masterclass you can download as well so there's lots of information that you can um, and lots of resources that you can get hold of um, to get you ahead of the curve where you need to be so if I look at one of the um, competencies here we're emotionally aware and uh, if you are not aware yourself I've done uh, videos on my YouTube channel rank success YouTube channel I've done podcasts uh, on on we're emotionally aware and other competencies so what I'm talking about now is the specific descriptors for you to look at so um, on the emotionally aware one at level two because there are different levels for these descriptors so <coughs> excuse me level one level two and level three so level one is for practitioners level two is for sergeant through to chief inspector and level three is for executive ranks um, so they are used to assess potential evidence and behavior for fast track candidates and for officers going for promotion beyond chief inspector so into the superintending ranks um, that's how it should be there are some experimentations with different forces uh, around using those different levels to assess uh, sergeants particularly so some sergeants are assessed at level one of the CVF or a mix and match between level one and level two and so uh, have a look at your instructions you, nearer the time you'll be given some detailed specific instructions but if we start with this one we're emotionally aware you will be assessed against these descriptor points and these descriptor points I'll read them out there's six of them for this competency and it starts off by saying I consider the perspectives of people from a wide range of backgrounds before taking action 
So this is under the competency, we're emotionally aware. So that's not, that's not surprising really, that's giving you some guidance that if you're gonna present some evidence or if you're gonna be assessed by assessors in a scenario that you are showing that you can um, consider the perspectives of people from a wide range of backgrounds and that you actually factor that into your work or into your uh, applications, into your letters, into your relationship building. And that's what would be expected of supervisors, um, managers and, and leaders, which is what you're putting yourself forward for. The second uh, descriptor is that I adapt my style and approach according to the needs of the people that I'm working with, using my own behavior to achieve the best outcome. So that's pretty straightforward guidance there. How will you demonstrate and reflect that in your own work? And if you haven't got any evidence for that at the moment, do you remember what the individual said, Mark said in his testimonial? Sit down with a pen and paper, or a pencil and paper, and write down any um, potential examples that you might have that align to these descriptors and to this uh, competency because in my experience when I encourage people to do that and they spend that time to sit down and slow time down a little bit grab a cup of coffee sit down and think okay when have I demonstrated this particular competency or emotionally aware in the workplace okay what have I got to help me oh there's a list of descriptors here let's see if I can kind of start stru structuring and shaping uh, and articulating some evidence because I think you will have it. Uh, I'll be really surprised if you haven't got it, but that's where these descriptors come in to really start bringing you on point, if you like, to, um, to articulate it on paper. Um, so the third point is, I promote a culture that values diversity and encourages challenge. So, okay, a little bit less clear that one, but how might you evidence that particular um, descriptor? I promote a culture that values diversity and encourages challenge. So you might need to sit down and give that one some more thought. Uh, the next one, I encourage reflective practice among others and take the time to support others to understand reactions and behaviours. So very much describing some of the attributes and characteristics of emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, emotional quotient there, um, encouraging reflective practice among other people, giving people time and space to think things through. Um, it's a great way of learning, reflective practice, and taking the time to support others to understand reactions and behaviours. So policing is pretty stressful at the moment. It, it, it's lots of change going on lots of pressures for officers so there will be lots of people that will uh, be reacting and behaving in certain ways as a leader as a manager as a supervisor how have you dealt with that how will you deal with that uh, in your privileged position of leadership so again it's slowing time down to think about that uh, the next bullet point number five i take responsibility for helping to ensure the emotional well-being of those in my teams. Pretty straightforward that as a descriptor. When have you done that? How will you do that as a newly promoted leader? So trying to articulate and demonstrate that can be quite hard because you might need to think things through. You might need to think about when you've done that. How would you do it in relation to your teams? It's really current, it's really topical, it's on point. Uh, so, you know, it's a great descriptor for you to help um, pull out, if you like, uh, and help you produce some evidence, some um, example of when you've actually done that, or think about, if you haven't got that evidence, how you would behave in accordance with that descriptor. And the last one for this one is uh, bullet point six, descriptor six, I take the responsibility to deal with any inappropriate behaviours. Well, that's a pretty broad term, inappropriate behaviours, but what do they mean by that? Well, they mean that as a sergeant, as a, as a leader, as a manager, as a supervisor, uh, it's a disciplined organisation. Sergeants are there to set, communicate and reinforce standards. So on point with that, I take responsibility to deal with any appropriate behaviours you might sit there and think, well, actually, that happened the other day. I had to deal with that as an acting sergeant or temporary sergeant. So just take a pen and pencil, slow it down. What was the context? What happened? 
you know what did you do about it what actions did you take and what was the outcome what was the result of that so just start to stru structure some short stories or some short examples alongside these um, descriptors for that so we've just gone through and slowed time down a little bit for one competency uh, on the CVF we're emotionally aware we've gone through the six or I've gone through the six descriptors the six bullet points put there to help you to construct and to structure your example your evidence uh, to make the case for you being considered for promotion uh, and that's what you've got so that's what the CVF gives you is those descriptors now if I look at we take ownership which is another uh, competency uh, there are five uh, bullet points descriptors there under that particular competency so under each of these competencies you've got uh, five six or seven bullet points that are really there to get you on point if you like with your evidence so that you can come up with something you can come up with something that reflects that guidance and if you can't that's okay that's just about you getting on with your personal development and trying to evidence that uh, in the workplace trying to reflect a little bit on when you have behaved in accordance with these descriptors and you know it starts to, to, to communicate to some people they actually haven't got the evidence so they have to start working on it as part of a CPD plan so whether that's um, uh, you know um, working as a volunteering for opportunities to, to learn and to grow and to develop CPD opportunities uh, acting or temporary opportunities that's where you'll start getting uh, some of that evidence uh, to support you uh, in a promotion process, selection process going forward. So we take ownership, is, um, there's five bullet points there and they pretty much nail what that competency is all about. So again, some real meaningful structure and guidance there for you. Do not underestimate how hard this can be. Um, as I've said, some people don't, <laughs> I wouldn't imagine anybody enjoys doing this but actually trying to find how it correlates and aligns to what you actually do at work is the difference between being a great operational cop and being a well-prepared promotion candidate. The two things are uh, the same animal, the same person if you like, but two, you know, a game of two halves, two different perspectives. Because as a promotion candidate you will be expected uh, to have some evidence in, in, a, in relation to those competencies and you'll certainly be assessed in a promotion selection process against those um, descriptors. What I'm going to do is have a quick uh, read through now of someone else's impression and again with all of this um, you know you can short circuit a lot of this now by downloading a digital promotion toolkit for sergeant uh, or inspector and chief inspector where you will be able to see some really detailed examples of what good evidence can look like uh, how you can start structuring meaningful evidence to support the case for you being promoted and to use as a prompt to start thinking through and reflecting and start shaping and constructing some meaningful evidence and then to kind of filter it forward face it forward uh, for forward facing questions and forward facing scenarios so how will you how would you uh, as opposed to you know what have you done and looking backwards at what you have done um, so Here's another example uh, by Dai, who's uh, just recently qualified as a Chief Inspector. And um, here's what Dai said recently. Hi Steve, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to let you know I got my result and I passed my Chief Inspector interview. My feedback repeatedly refers to my evidence as being at the high end of Chief Inspector level. When you consider I failed resoundingly last time, and in that feedback my performance was criticised for lacking evidence of broader impact, not demonstrating uh, operation or operating at chief inspector level and lacking strategic perspective. The difference is night and day. For my unsuccessful preparation a year ago, I concentrated on looking back and finding examples fitting the CVF, checking against indicators and methodically working through each example to make sure it fitted the competency. It was robotic and sounded contrived. This time, inspired by your podcasts, videos and your masterclass, I approached the entire process as an opportunity to develop as a leader. 
being more self-aware with an understanding of my values has then made me a stronger candidate with no need to rely on any buzzwords to try and demonstrate uncertain to try and demonstrate certain behaviours. I had no need because I can talk about my leadership with authenticity and because I'm living it every working day. I just wanted to say thanks for your help, um, Di. So that captures uh, a experience by Di who was unsuccessful a year ago and who has recently been successful by going through, and I just wanted to come back to some of the parts he says there about f fitting the CVF. So I concentrated on looking back and finding examples, fitting the CVF, checking against indicators, and methodically working through each example to make sure it fitted the competency. It was robotic and sounded contrived. And that's a risk. So even though I'm starting this, um, this talk to you about uh, doing exactly what Di did there, that's just the basics, that's the foundation. So anybody who goes for promotion, um, I always encourage them to think about doing a depth and breadth of preparation. So not just doing the structuring pieces as, as Di alludes to there, um, trying to allude to uh, each of the competencies and trying to get your evidence against each competency. It can come across then when you sit down if you don't understand it at a deeper level as robotic and repetitive which is not what you want to come across at, at, on a promotion board and what it really indicates is you probably haven't done enough work to start talking about it uh, from any different perspectives so and and Di also alludes to actually doing it every day that's another good thing if you can read through this and start reflecting on your evidence and working through it uh, and writing it down making it tangible um, because you suddenly you can't just sit down and suddenly say, okay, here's my six examples against each of the CVF competencies, and they're all tightly aligned to each of the descriptors for those competencies, and here's my example for each of the values, and yet that's exactly what candidates do every single year. They sit down, uh, having passed the exam, or the force opens up a promotion selection process or advertises one, and that's exactly what people do. They sit down and try and rush through this and, uh, you know, get what they get. You know, some people do get through doing that. Um, other people spend a whole year um, kind of doing what I'm alluding to now, which is download the guidance, start getting used, start getting aligned, start getting familiarised with it, get, get your head around it, and then start thinking, what evidence do I have to demonstrate that competency? And then build on it, get your momentum, get some traction and reflect on it. So you, you, your first drafts will be like, a, you know, father of the bride speech or best man speech, you know, rough drafts. You're never going to read out the first drafts. You're never going to present those first drafts to anybody. They're just yours in a folder so that you can start refining them and distilling them as you work through them and start ensuring that they get closer and more aligned to the descriptors. So the descriptors is in essence what I'm trying to talk to you about today. They are the meat in the sandwich, the real detail that you need to focus on to align your competency uh, and your descriptors um, against, the, against the descriptors. Um, as I say, it can be hard, it's not easy. Um, I always take my hat off. I'm really impressed and inspired by people that get through promotion selection processes today. They seem to be getting more and more um, difficult and challenging. Uh, and the competition, which is a word lots of people leave out, it's a competition. So if you start your preparation a year in advance of someone that starts only two or three weeks before a promotion selection process, Funnily enough, more of those people that commit make that commitment to, you know, doing stuff, you know, twelve months, six months, nine months ahead, they reach the promotion selection process, you know, match fit, ready to go, and on point. Uh, and what I mean by that is a, a degree of confidence um, that is higher than other people who have had to kind of rush to get there. Um, one other thing I would say with the descriptors is, uh, even though there are four, five, six, or seven 
uh, descriptors of bullet points for each of those competencies. Here's a little thing I would like to communicate to you is when you look at those um, descriptor bullet points, you do not have to evidence every single one of them. And it's something that it's a common mistake. It's uh, it's not a secret, but it's it's something that everybody has to discover each time. So if you look at them, the five bullet points uh, for we take ownership, you don't have to evidence every single one of them. If you've got an example that does evidence every single one of them, brilliant. Write it down, capture it, refine it, distill it, and ensure that through as you tell out your story, here's the problem, here's the context, here's the situation I dealt with, here are the actions that I took in accordance with that competency and those descriptors, and here's the result of the outcome. If you can encapsulate all of them in your example, brilliant. You know, go ahead and do that. And that's what you should be aspiring to do. But what I find is lots of people think that their examples have to reflect every one of those bullet points and they don't the assessors will assess you against whether you have reflected those descriptors in your evidence and you may not be able to demonstrate all of them in your written application so you may only be able to demonstrate two or three out of the five or six that's okay because you may well get tested against the other descriptors uh, in another part of the process. You may have to do a situational judgment test, you may have to do an interview, you may have to do a presentation, you may have to do a briefing. So you get assessed across the exercises. The point being is try and reflect as much of each of the descriptors as you can in each in your evidence and examples. So again, you know, a lot of people think that you have to reflect all of them, you don't, but you should reflect as many of them as you can and I hope that that makes sense to you. Uh, I'm just going to read out another quick um, testimonial to reflect um, someone else's experience here around how helpful the uh, guidance digital toolkits, the resources on my site. So there's lots of free resources before I uh, talk about the, the digital toolkit. Um, there are free podcasts, free YouTube videos, uh, free downloadable guides, and probably more than you'll find anywhere else. Uh, I also um, summarize for you uh, reports, so appeal reports, for your, so your force HMIC reports, um, and that, that stands, sorry, that stands for police effectiveness, efficiency, and legitimacy, and they're reports that are issued in relation to each force uh, every year. Uh, the Police Foundation just did a uh, significant massive piece of work in relation to policing I've summarized that on my YouTube channel for you uh, I've just finished a four-part blog on women in policing uh, and the challenges the inspiration the um, uh, the enablers all the issues for women uh, candidates have a look at that there's a, a four-part uh, blog and I've also summarized that as a video um, so there's a whole load of information to help you start piecing all of this together uh, and to start putting on paper what's the most important which is essentially your evidence against the CVF and aligned to the descriptors because that's what we're talking about here I've covered a, a kind of wide range of information but essentially it boils down to you your evidence your examples what you've done and what you've got to offer a promotion selection board uh, when the time comes for you but all I can tell you now all of the work of the successes and you'll see successes on my site uh, click the testimonials and have a look there's an ever-growing page on there now uh, I'm reading out some of the recent ones but you'll see hundreds of them on my site now of new um, sergeants new inspectors new chief inspectors sharing their experience of how they've gone through this process um, so the last one I wanted to do was just look at, uh, just speak very quickly about Jack so Jack sent me this recently hi Steve I just wanted to say thanks for your guide uh, your application and your interview success guide uh, I've been I've just been successful first time at my sergeant assessment center today going in there looking for questions to my answers and the structured knowledge from your guides and podcasts is the reason I got through your Spotify podcasts were invaluable in giving me the base knowledge and the cognitive provocation to think around the issues on my daily 70 mile commute kind regards Jack so again, someone taking action, someone taking a quantum leap forward in terms of their preparation with this stuff, starting off not knowing anything about the CVF, starting off 
um, being completely unfamiliar with descriptors and how uh, they relate to uh, evidence uh, that you're going to put forward uh, and ultimately to build your confidence so reading through this stuff will incrementally build your confidence raise your awareness so that when you do have that um, process that's advertised by your force uh, and that may be imminent for you it may be six months nine months down the line now is the time it's always the time now to start getting familiar with it to pick up some information as i say it's free you don't even need to spend a penny coin but you can um, absorb and read through and listen to a tremendous amount of information to help you with your promotion aspirations and what I find with lots of people is you know they do it once they get promoted to sergeant uh, they get promoted to inspector they get promoted to chief inspector and they started off doing much of what I've been talking about today becoming familiar with how they're going to be assessed and if you don't become familiar with how you're going to be uh, assessed, then you know the learning ground, the uh, disappointment, the frustration, um, you know the um, anger sometimes that 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 surfaces is when it's all about when people have to go back to the beginning and do it all again, when there's this opportunity to do it uh, the first time uh, right. So if you're listening to this now, there is an opportunity to do it right doesn't cost you a penny uh, but have a look at the CVF have a look at the descriptors start to become familiar with them start to lay out your own evidence in writing make it tangible uh, even if you don't have to do an application in your force because it will help you with your interview preparation and it will help you to start putting the pieces together uh, around the competencies and around the descriptors and around the values okay so that's a, a short uh, talk about uh, the descriptors and the CVF uh, and how you can get match fit if you like or start that process. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, pop along to my site ranksuccess.co.uk have a look at the resources that are there for you and make your own decisions. Uh, I wish you all the best whatever you choose to do and until uh, next time take care.